Hello and welcome to this video on all smart repair. In this video I'm going to show you how to replace the charging port of an iPhone 14 Pro Max. You can also use the video for iPhone 14, 14 Pro or newer models like 15 and 15 Pro because it's uh, nearly the same procedure. Here you can see the new charging port, it's an original pull part, so it's uh, made from Apple. I will link uh, the parts in the description so you can buy them as well. For the repair I'm using my 13-in-1 repair set where we have this nice 6-in-1 screwdriver that has 6 bits so you can repair like every smartphone on the market, no problem. Also we have a scalp in there, a plectrum, this tweezer in plastic, no metal so you cannot short uh, the main board or something else it's very helpful and other cool stuff is also inside so just check out the link in the description uh, where you can buy this stuff for the first step we have to open the device for sure and remove the bottom screws before we do that i will show you that the device is not charging at the moment here's the lightning cable uh, i have a power bank here it's showing 50 percent yeah, and as you can see, nothing is happening. The charging port is not working at all. And if you wireless charge it, it's working just perfectly fine. Uh, I glue the sticker here so you don't see the customer because uh, yeah, they don't want it. So in the first step to open the device, we need our six and one screwdriver with a, a Torx bit. I already put it in, so there we can now remove the two bottom screws of the iPhone 14 Pro Max in this case and then we take the two screws and put them on the magnet map I'll put them in the bottom here and in the next step we need to heat up the display therefore I'm using my heat plate it's set to 100 degrees you can also use a hairdryer or yeah, solder station to heat up the device. Um, I will leave it there for 20 seconds, then it's hot enough to easily open the device. To open the device, we now take a suction cap that's also inside of the 31 set and a scalp, it's also inside. We place the scalp on the side of the phone. We press it until we are inside and down to the metal frame. Then we take isopropanol I'll put a link in the description as well. And now we can gently push up the display so the isopropanol gets between the metal frame and the display so it can loosen the glue. You cannot damage the phone by doing this um, because you don't touch the, the frame with the metal of the scalp. And as you can see, it's already easily coming up. And we can now place the plectrum in case of the scalp. With more isopropanol, I'm now losing the original glue. I'm also always trying to reuse the original glue of the display. It's the best seal for the iPhone. All copy glues are not that good, but yeah, if you damage the original uh, seal, you can for sure use them. Be, be careful in the top of the display there's the face ID and we don't want to damage it. Now we can open the device and you already see the inside, the battery camera display and here's the plate we need to remove. It's holding down all the flex cables. I already um, put in the tripod bit so we can remove all of the tripod screws. The screws here are all the same but I always like to um, sort them so every screw comes back where it came from because sometimes for some models the screw length is a little bit different and yeah you can damage the main board 
if you screw in too long screws. Um, yeah, but they are all the same, so you don't need to be careful for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I cannot guarantee that it's the same for the 15 Pro and 14 Pro. Um, yeah, so just check out the screws if they are the same length. This one in the top here is a little bit longer, so this needs to be replaced to the same spot later. Now we can take our plastic tweezer and remove this plate, put it to the side. And now we can also take the uh, plastic tweezer to remove the battery connector from the main board, LCD connector, and also the flex cable for the face ID and sensoric. Now we can take the display and put it to the side because we don't need it anymore at the moment. And in the next step we can remove this part here, it's glued to the main board. It belongs underneath the plate as you saw. So in the next step we can also remove all flex cable connections we now see and can remove at the moment. Also, I'm using anti-static um, gloves. You can use a static anti-static cable or also gloves. Um, it's your decision what you want to use here. We have another tripod screw here. It's holding down the main board. Also, those screws need to be yeah, put on a magnet map so you later know where it came from. I now remove the SIM card tray. You can use a SIM card tray ejection pin or just push this pin up. Then you can take out the SIM card easy. Try to pull up the battery flex cable. It's better. In the next step, we take isopropanol, put it to the right side of the battery. And now we can put back the phone on the heat plate so the glue is getting loose and we can easily remove the battery. So when a device is hot enough we now take our pry tool or metal pry tool put it between the battery and the frame take some more isopropanol and now with heat and isopropanol we should easily pull up the battery without damaging it don't use too much force and now we perfectly removed the battery as you can see it's not damaged at all we can reuse it as wanted it's don't don't need to be replaced because it's working just perfectly fine if you use blank fingers it's way easier to remove this um, glue from the battery that's why I'm removing my glove for now and you can then pull this glue away. Now the battery is in fine condition. Use a flat underground and press it so these pulls uh, yeah, are flattened down again. Then we also need to remove the glue inside of the phone for sure. Try to pull the rest of it out if possible if not you need to use your fingers for this and should work perfectly fine In my case there is a little bit isopropanol left that's why I cannot remove it that easily at the moment. But now I think I got it.
So now, now all of the adhesive residue is removed from the phone, so we later can use new glue stripes and glue back the battery. For the next step, we yeah, re completely remove the main board now. Um, therefore, I'm using my glove again here. Take the torque screwdriver and the, we now remove those big screws. Just um, push them inside and then we can remove those guys. Also, they are not the same, so try to put them back in the same position where they came from later after I replaced the battery and the charging port. There we have another one with a speaker. And then we have uh, some more screws here. I also wanted to show you my big screwdriver. I'll also link it in the description. I will use it for the charging port um, soon. And uh, yeah, you can um, change the force of the screwdriver here. It's perfect if, if you do many repairs like me. But you can also use the uh, six in one screwdriver to remove those screws here. Just change the bit. As we should remove the speaker, it's way easier to remove the main board then that's why I'm doing this and also underneath we now have this screw so in the next step we should now can remove the um, main board take the plastic tweezer go underneath it and just push it up nothing can happen here it's perfectly removed now and now we can remove the charging port <laughs> that's the reason why we open the device but yeah it's like always you have to remove so many parts to come to this point I also removed the face ID because it was just loose here and now I take my big screwdriver remove all the screws and also try to put them like you always know where they came from so every screw maybe have a different length so just try to order them on the magnet map so we later know where they came from. This is very important because they mostly all got different length and thickness. Then we take the plastic tweezer, we can now remove the main speaker. There we have another one of those large screws. It's holding down the Taptic Engine or vibration motor, as you want to call it. It also has a flex cable connected to the charging port. I remove the Taptic Engine and now I take the plastic tweezer, remove this metal sheet here. It's glued and also it has this little metal part that's holding down to the left side. If you look from the upside, then I take the scalp again, remove the microphone here, it's glued down as well. And then we have uh, three more screws of the special um, bigger screws. They are also different, so always try to yeah, know where they came from, important. Now I take my three pot screwdriver again. And there's another screw on in the frame that needs to be removed. On the other side, we also have two more here. Many, many screws always for this charging port. Another one here. I hope you guys see it on the camera, what I'm doing. And yeah, we can lift up this um, P3 
piece here now that's holding the microphone. And now we have one more screw here, one more screw here. This all also is a special screw here. And now I take the big again, remove this one. And we have another one on the other side as well. And now the two last screws <laughs> are the one holding down the charging port to the frame. I'll check if I can do it with big, if not, yeah, I can do it. Now we have unscrewed all screws. We now to need to heat up the charging port again so the glue gets loose and with isopropanol we then can remove it. When the device is hot enough, we take isopropanol again. Take the scalp and gently push up the charging port. There's no force needed, as you can see, and you easily can take it out now. Put it to the side. Now we need to uh, dry this. Take a towel here, paper towel, or tissue, is it called in English, I think. <laughs> and yeah, now we can already take the new charging port. What I also do is take T7000, and put a little bit of glue on every borehole so the screws will fit perfect and will not lose from the vibratic vibration of the Taptic engine. Um, for me this is important, not everybody does this, but I want that the device is lasting as long as possible after my repair, so I'm already and always using this T7000 to glue this down. Now we can take the charging port, place it back. Inside the phone. Be very gently here, no force needed. So we don't crack any chips or something. And the first step is we take the both bottom screws of the charging port. I will remove my glue gloves now because we cannot damage something here at the moment with static and screw them back in. One of those screws uh, just flew away, um, but I always have some screws some extra screws if I lose any of them. So now I got them both back inside. Now it's your decision what you start with. I will start with the corner one with the last ones I also removed. And this way I yeah always have no problems with with uh, screws being over at the end or have some of them left this is not good so I always try to start with the ones I ended with Now I like to take the special screws here, put them back. Now all of the special screws um, with the bore inside are back inside. Um, now I take T7000 as well because the screws that came come inside of them need to hold as well. After we glued the yeah, special screws here, I will now take the Taptic engine and try to put it back. Also, we'll put back the microphones here. 
Now we can take the Taptic engine and already connect the Taptic engine to the charging port in this case. Special screw again. D7000 again. Main speaker can now also be replaced back into the phone. And now I take this middle sheet plate put it back as well yeah and now we can take all of the rest screws and put them all back so now we successfully replaced the charging port here's the old one as you saw many many screws that need to be uh, screwed out and screwed in yeah that's why it's not an easy repair but yeah you can do it I now put back my anti-static gloves because I want to replace the main board soon. Now I'm taking the face ID, put it back inside. Then I take a little bit of glue again, fill every bore hole again with it. So everything will be perfectly Now I take the main board, gently pull up the flex cables. When the main board is in the correct position, we now can yeah, screw back the special screws here again. Also the one that was nearly lost this one <laughs> also the one that was underneath the speaker seems like it's not been magnetic that's why we need a pry tool or a tweezer back inside now we take the speaker oh before we put back the speaker we reconnect all the flex cables in the top here it's easier to replace the speaker then because we have some more space to bend the flex cables also for the camera I already will do this now as you can see the face ID wants to go up because the speaker is missing so yeah I will disconnect the flex cables from the face ID and put back the speaker first now that the speaker is inside we can take the screws again. So, speaker is in as well, it's the ear speaker. Uh, now we can reconnect all the flex cable connections here to the motherboard. Always gently push the connections, don't use force. I'll now take a little bit of T7000 again to re-glue the little metal sheet plate here.
For me, this is very dumb how they made it because you always have to glue this one. Why? <laughs> I don't understand this. Now reconnect the charging port, which was the reason for redoing this job here. <clears throat> and we also can now take the battery. Um, I will always also put back this um, plastic glue here. It's not very important if you don't do it. No problem, doesn't matter. A new glue pad. This is not for the 13 Pro, but doesn't matter. It's also working perfectly fine. And in the top, I'm using this one. This is enough. So to replace the battery, mostly it's better to first connect the battery to the main board and then we put back in the battery. So the flex cables will be in the correct position. Now we push it down to the middle frame so the glue gets his connection. And now we remove the battery connector again. So now I also take the SIM card tray, put it back inside and we are nearly finished with this Yeah, really hard repair. I have to say it's not easy, not for everybody. So if you don't want to do it on your own, you can contact us and we can do the repair for you. I'll now reconnect the flex cable connections, remove my gloves here because they are fucking annoying. <laughs> Take the metal sheet plate. Put it back inside. Take the three pot screwdriver. And we now have to screw back all of the screws here. I just saw a little mistake I made. This sheet plate needs to be underneath this part. There's a little uh, metal part that needs to be above this plate. So I cannot close it now. I need to remove the plate again and push it underneath. Yeah, this little mistake I made. So I need to open it again. The plate needs to be underneath it. This was my mistake and that was all. And that is the reason why the display was not closing as it should. There was a little space between the glass and the metal frame that shouldn't be there. And yeah, that why, that's why the device was not closing perfectly. But now it should. So now, <laughs> now is everything correct? Now you see the sheet plate is underneath here. We now take the battery pack and try if the charging port is working. And as you can see, the charging port is just working perfectly fine. We switch the positions to the upside, working perfectly fine. The repair was very successfully and the charging port replacement worked as we wanted. We can put back the display push it to the front and easily push it down. That's why I said 
you don't need force to push down the display and if you need there's something not correct so now the last two steps are take the bottom screws put them back inside and if you reuse the glue like me the seal just put the device on the heat plate for yeah about 20 30 seconds heat up the device and press down then it's perfectly fine you cannot guarantee a seal for waterproofness but you cannot do always because you don't know is this waterproof is this waterproof is this still waterproof you cannot guarantee that so i hope you like the repair and leave a like and uh, abo if you have any questions or yeah something <laughs> you should tell me that i should need to do better just comment it down below i'm open for everything and yeah, I hope you have a nice day. See you till next time. Bye bye.